go left here first, Kelly. Uh, is this left? That is left. Thanks. Today. So, we're down in Chile on a river that I've never fished. I have had friends that have been here tons. And it's one of the few, I mean, it's one of the few hit lists for me, the Food of the Flu. Uh, it very, we're going to strip streamers all morning and just go through the whole, the whole change thing. But it's, the, as you can see, Scenic value is zero. I mean, it's a really ugly place to fish. As you can see, this is one of those rivers where if you grew up reading magazines and fishing books and you dreamed of being in it, this is one of those rivers that would have been mentioned forever. And it was just a dream river, right? It's like, and so it was just one of those things. This is when you read back in the day when magazines were still out and popular, it would be this would be the river that you someday you said, I'm gonna go there. And we are there now. I'm not performing up to what I would hope I would be, but we're gonna get some. We're gonna Brock, my guide there, has assured me that we are in the lunchbox hole. And there's a 24 inch brown here that has my name on it. So if I don't get him, it will be his fault, not mine. I mean, he said it's a sure thing. And so any minute now, we're gonna get a two footer. I think, maybe, hopefully. Brock happens to be basically from my, he lives in Twin Bridges, right? Yes, sir. He lives about, 45 miles from me in Montana. And I hear he's a really good guide. But he's gonna have to start putting fish on the end of my line for me because I obviously can't do it myself today. I'm going through a color rotation like I always do. I'm a little slow. Oh, did you see that fish? I saw that one. That was fish him, was, Kelly. That was, was fish. That was the one. As I turn, my fly's floating right there. Brown's right underneath it. He's just on a total race for it. So I guess Brock is, he just didn't like me insulting him. So that was all Brock's fault. I like to keep my flies out so I can see. So we started bright, then we contrast, and we went slick willy. Did we have an eat on that? We had one eat on the weed One eat on the willy, bright fly. I think I had one on that, or no, I had it on the olive. I had a, another bump, not much of one. And so now I'm on olive and white. Once I, you know, for me, once I get a zone where I can see things, I have more confidence. When I'm throwing blind to big water like this, I sometimes tend to go a little longer on my switches. So it took us eight minutes to come down here and we had two eats. That's okay. I mean, that's not a, uh, well, I didn't, the one was a chase, it wasn't an eat. So that's okay. But I would never want to go more than five minutes without something happening. And then knowing the water, now that I can see all these, I mean, this is just premium looking stuff. It's a false security. You like, you're seeing them touch it, but they're not committing. And you want to, you think they're going to eat it. It just seems that you need to change that up. So I'm, I'm going to give it to the end of this weed bed and then I'll switch up to Contrast it. I'm going to go to something different completely. I'm probably going to go to yellow. I think I've had a bump on every color, but I haven't committed to anything. My theory is always try to go complete changes. It's not, don't do subtle changes, do big ones when you're looking. Somebody forgot to pack all my flies for me this morning. I don't know who the hell that was. Probably Braden's fault when you get down to it. 
So yesterday, that's a bad habit too. When you're fishing, don't always refer to yesterday because today is not yesterday. But yesterday in much the same water, we were fishing zoo cougars and they were they were jumping on it pretty good. It's a this is my first real national fly that went kind of big in the world, kind of started the whole streamer bigger streamer thing. As you saw, it's not very big. It's a zoo cougar. But back in the 80s, when this stuff started, that was considered a giant fly. People would come in my store and say, what's that, tarpon fly? <laughs> no. But by today's standards, it's a kind of a small fly, but the fly, it's my favorite fly for over weed beds because it doesn't sink at all and it hovers. There's studies about brown trout that say they can, they could feel, they don't database things, right? They don't, they're not like quite as smart as we go and give them, we give them a lot of credit when we can't catch them. <laughs> like really smart right now, right? It's not true, but they work off of vibration and on weed beds, why we why I call it the checkerboard when you're fishing weed beds where there's mixes like that and you got gaps between them they there's they seem to have a particular desire to ambush more in that water and I think it's because it goes over those weed beds and it pushes the vibration to them I think it's kind of it, it just it, it intensifies that reactionary bite where they come up and they're just like bam I gotta have that thing it's going over my head and so I'm letting it hover over I'm trying to get my line basically on them I got a 250 grain airflow streamer max on streamer max long so I've got a 30 foot head which is sinking very quickly hey oh there he is I mean, like that zoo cougar on cue, baby. Love you. Fish that behave how they're supposed to. He's a tugger. Little fish pulling like a 30 incher. Beautiful brown trout. Whoa. Good job. Hello. You can let him go. Show him to show him to the world there. Doesn't have to. My first food of the flu brown trout. Just so you're if you're curious, Brock said it was going to be a 24. <laughs> just so, just, I mean, just so you know. So now we're on yellow, which I said probably wouldn't be the color that I would choose for today. And then it was the only commitment. That's why I do my, why I do the big switches. And I don't, I try to fight the urge to do what I want to have happen or I think should happen. That's why I go through my colors the way I do. Because I tend, like everybody does, you tend to remember yesterday or last week or the last time you fished a section and you don't really get to the color change as quick as you should. Does not mean it'll last either. I mean, it's, it just, it could be a freak fish, could be anything, but it's, you just need to keep thinking how long have you been fishing that? How many, have you had any activity? I mean, I, oh, 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 he's still on it. Oh, I still got him. Oh. <laughs> Are you kidding me? He sharked it. Got you, buddy. You see that thing come up and shark that thing? Spun around it and it's still going. He's going crazy looking for it. I'd say they like the yellow cougar. I get him. I got a short rod. <laughs> They broke in three pieces. No, came undone. That's a pretty fish. The nice little fish. Pretty. You'll never get tired of that blue cheek plate. It's beautiful. Be gone. <laughs> <laughs> Good hook set. You see that? That fish came up, and as we were going, and I was talking as I always am. I was like this and he sharked it. He went underneath it and spun and he went that way and I twitched it twice and he just attacked it. It was so cool. This, oh, could you see that on the camera? It was really cool. 
That's what you live for, so it's really unique, crazy eats like that. Brock, <laughs> terrible guiding. Hopefully you Why brought more rods. What, what, uh, <laughs> I've got your rods. That's the best part of this. Uh, terrible. Don't set so hard, Kelly. What a little call, help. What with, do you call that set? Hmm? Well, that wasn't a trout set. <laughs> <laughs> that was a Bassmaster Elite Series set. Love it. I actually didn't think I hit it that hard. I, I just went like that. Went off like a gunshot. You know how old this rod is? Brand new. 24 hours. First one I've ever broke. I've had fish these things forever. What's on that? 200? Uh, yeah. I'm impressed that you can pull this panga around in this wind upstream. Johnny could, you know, you ever met Johnny? I haven't done it yet. Yeah, he couldn't do this. <laughs> he wouldn't do this. I mean, he hardly ever rows when you get down to it. It's like, we fish together a lot. Well, actually, I row Johnny a lot, because he just never will fish, or never will row me. Is this a seven weight? Seven. Beautiful. Is this your rod? Nope. Lodge's rod? Lodge's rod. So you don't rod. really care if I break it? Nope. For sure, Johnny would be on the motor right now. He would never row me like this. There's a fish in this thing. Look at this. This is absolute money water. Weed bed. Look structure. at this thing. Everything you've ever wanted in. I don't know if we can call this a river anymore. We're still in the river. Yeah. Kind of the, the Boca. We're in the Boca. The Boca. Because it's so good and it works. Oh, oh hello. Piece of shit. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh rainbow. rainbow. <laughs> I'm here. Oh, look at that gut on this thing. I don't know what he's been eating. Snails. Look at the gut on his, that thing. Look at his ass. That was kind of like ice fishing. <laughs> Let it soak. Got a bite. <laughs> <laughs> That's a non game species, by the way. We do not fish for rainbows. Trash fish. <laughs> non game species. What's your best color in this river? I like black and olive. Black and olive. Got it. I've caught more fish over 24 on this fly than any fly in my history. And it's only three or four years old. What's it called again? Slick Willy. Slick Willy. Had 26 fish over 24 in a week with this fly once on the mow. Fall time? Spring. Spring time. You should get your biggest fish in the spring. People always think fall. Right. But they're hyperphagic in the late fall and in the spring, twice when they have to put it back on, especially browns, right? A lot of misconceptions in this world. I've done a lot of videos about not letting go. I'm going to tell you just because I'm thinking of it right now. I do not like to, I don't like to let go of my line like that with my left hand because it tends to, when you do that, it tends to flop over your stripping guide. And also, you're not in control when your fly hits the water. So I like to keep it in my hand right there. So the second the fly hits, I'm in control of it. Just, it's a bad habit to let go. And people that let go of that a lot tend to kind of throw the line forward a little bit and it wraps around. Bad habit. But back to the, ooh. <sighs> Back to this. Oh, I can see one. I see a fish. So now what I was saying was that when I can identify the water and I know, like when we floated the first time through, the light was different, whatever it was, I didn't see any of this. But now I know that I, I know where the fish should be or I think I know where they should be. And so I will have more tendency, I'll switch if I don't get eat, I'm gonna switch quicker when I know I've covered really good water. When I, there is a fish sitting on the edge of this weed bed, I guarantee you. I mean, probably every 20, 30 feet down here somewhere, there's a fish. And so if I don't get any activity in two or three minutes, I'm going to switch that up. What's the, what's the sink rate on that? 250. It's actually off, it's off the chart actually, because it's a tungsten line. Okay. And so equivalent would be T14, right. which is just the weight. It's not the 
sink rate. Sink rate, they will say, is 12 inches a second. That's in a pool without tension. So it really can't be done. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, that's really getting, and that, that all those rates, so it, it is a T, it would be a, considered a six, like that's was the fastest, but they'll call T14 faster because it is the heaviest, that's the biggest that you can make a line sink, right? But it really isn't. It's, but it's, if I don't do a thing, like right there, that line will go about six inches a second. But it's considered 12 inches a second. And doing anything to impede it, stacking or whatever, doesn't do a thing. It doesn't accelerate the line to go down. And so, hey, what's oh. that duck? I saw that thing yesterday. What is it? What is that thing? Domestic duck. Is it? I have no idea. I saw him yesterday, and I wasn't sure what it was. Got a unique tail set. I will hit this rod on this moat and break my rod. It's been done before. I had a client fall out of the boat once from a hangover. Passed out. Standing there. I don't remember if he was casting or if we were, if he was like this, they just went right out of the f***ing boat. <laughs> I thought I had a heart attack. He lands in the water, he goes, God damn it. <laughs> Did you just get passed out? He goes, kinda. <laughs> Try to swim this one deep here. We're gonna be a minute here. We got a lot of shit going on. How does this happen to a person? Deep? Deep, deep here. Thought I had them all. We'll give it a little time to sink. That's perfect. That's perfect. Break another rod. So we moved out. We moved from, we were fishing a little shallow. We just moved out 20, 30 yards, 20 yards maybe. So now we're out and we're 12 foot of water or so. So we're letting the line sink down a little bit further, just slow down, let, throw it, let it sit. The line's gonna sink, you know. None of the lines do exactly what they say on their box. They don't. They're not tested under tension. So I'm just letting this thing sink and drop down to see if there's anything down in the deeper zone. This is kind of a big sandy, sandy f bottom. Is it? Log, log structure on it. It's deep, but they'll kind of hide behind those logs. I'm gonna cast a little bit further upstream, obviously, because I want the currents carrying this out. It's pretty good current coming through here. I'm letting it, I throw a little bit high, letting the line sink. Line, I've got an ant, I've got a painted envy on. It's got a cone head, so it's, it sinks pretty quick too. So they're probably going about the same speed. And then I'm gonna let it just swing through here. I, I, I don't like to swing, just dead swing. I still like to, animate the fly a little bit to keep it moving just slowing down and fish are you know they're following their food source they, that's what they do for a living they don't they, they don't just they don't have they don't have hobbies right <laughs> all they do is eat and so they follow their food source and if so if they're if there was a lot of activity on the surface your fish are going to come floor up there aren't that many insects here so there's not like a hatch you're following. So you gotta find where your fish are. They could be, I mean, you can draw them up sometimes. Sometimes you're gonna go down to them and get it in their face. Oh, tapper. That might've been a log. So I'm just, we're just going, we've been top water. We, we're not top water, but we've been higher in the water column, like less than six feet, maybe you know, five, four, three, four, five, six feet, whatever the weed beds were. Now I'm just getting below that. See if there's fish down there. I touched bottom on that last cast, so I know that it took me about to here and I started to retrieve and not doing much retrieve. I'm just vertical jigging. You know, it's kind of like, I've always, you know, I move, I don't strip my line. Everybody knows that I don't do this. I, I move it with my rod always. And basically there's two types of retrieves. There's either kind of a <clears throat> horizontal where you're coming across the water 
and you're moving it like this where you're coming across and you're moving the fly this way or you can pick your rod it's the same thing just in a vertical position so now I'm going to be lifting the rod up and all I'm trying to do is make the fly do this there's nothing more to it it's not complex it's just pick the rod up strip the excess pick the rod up strip the excess incredibly important if you're a single if this is all you have in your arsenal is to do this you really only have this you can't move a fly like if I want to go slow you really and if you don't believe this get underwater I mean it's you can't move a fly slow by just doing this if the water's moving the fly will just barely it won't really move the fly and it you think you're doing it but you're really just picking up the excess as it goes past you if you get in the water if you go underwater and have somebody cast a fly at you you'll see this get drunk get naked and get in the neighbor's pool and throw flies around I don't know maybe not maybe not all of those <laughs> but so basically you've got this where you pick your line up but you're not really and it's not nearly as much of this as you think it is especially I'm throwing how long is this head 20 foot 25 yeah, 20 so we're doing 40 foot cast about you're not picking the fly up like this like you think you are because all that lines there so the lines low it's got kind of a lob to it like this right you pick it up you you might get the head to move up a little bit but you don't get this on a long cast you've got to be pretty short on your cast to get a real vertical jig oh you got i saw yeah. him shark me shark. Uh, that was hilarious <laughs> I went like that, and the rod went up, and that fish went, oh, that's the second one that sharked it right at the boat. Very pale brown shark. Nothing like a good story getting ruined by a fish. Just kidding. Is that the back hook? No. I didn't think so. Yeah. Back hook's pinched. Oh, boy. As I was saying, your, the jig isn't nearly as accentuated as you think it is when you're long casting. That fly, I was getting ready to pick, that's the second one that's done that to me. The first one when I broke the rod, sharked it, spun in a circle. That one when I was going like this, talking about it, the fish, I saw it going. Shark, <laughs> it's like shark. he's trying to, bite. I'm like, what the hell? And he ate it. I mean, I, I didn't, that, that wasn't really a hook set. <laughs> He just ate it. But if you were, what I was saying is if there's two, I mean, you're, you're either this way, sideways, which is kicking your fly and you're just trying to accentuate it. But when you're vertical, especially if you fish cold water, early season, late season, when the fish, when the water temperatures are down, it really behooves you to know how to slow pick it, just, just slow jig, just pick it up, drop your rod. You, you pick up the line, you strip the excess. You just up, down. All you're doing is this. You're just making that fly lazy ass, doing nothing, swimming along, you know, in the wrong place at the wrong time, and it gets eaten. But if you only strip with your stripping hand, you're leaving a lot of fish on the tape. It's just, I don't care how good you are, you can only make a fly do so much. And it's much better with the rod because you can, you can't do little movements like this. You really don't move the fly as much as you think you do. But with a tight line, if you tap your rod, you move that, you move that fly, right? It's doing this, doing whatever. And when you want to slow it down, if you were just going to do this with your rod tip and just go slow, it's very obvious that you're only going to barely move the fly, right? People don't practice their fishing. They just go fishing. And I like people to take a white fly, don't fish, cut the damn hook off, cut it off so you can't possibly catch a fish and practice. And you'll see what you can do with the fly, particularly, I like to people to start with a white fly, single hook, and just learn to make the fly do different things. Lake situations, it's real. you're really, if you go underwater, you know, and watch the fly, you'll see there's not a lot of animation to your fly, especially with a sinking line, because you got to think about that line sinking, right? Flies behind it. 
if it's a weighted fly, it's going to go right the same distance. So when you pick the rod up, you're doing very little to the line like this because it's so long. So it's laying out there on the bottom doing or heading down. You pick it up, all you do is kind of push it like this. You barely move your fly. And so when you have the sinking line, you've got it. You'll notice it when I was showing it. I'm, I've got my rod low. Doesn't If you can look at the line, when I do that, I don't do hardly anything. I'm, really, I'm just pumping the fly a tiny bit, right? Because you can see the fly line. I'm picking it up. And all I'm doing is I'm just this to the fly. It's really, it's really not much action at all when you're that far away. 20 foot of the line is sinking, the rest is floating. You're basically just pulling the line a tiny bit, but the fly's not going like this because it's got all that sinking line in front of it. The fly line in front of that fly is probably four times as heavy as the fly. So all you're doing is pulling it like that just a tiny bit. So it helps you to pick the rod up a little bit more. Although, oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> There's a fish on this thing right now. I don't know if it's still on. <laughs> that was not a hard set. That wasn't. <laughs> That's two rods in a day. That's more <laughs> rods that I've broke in the last 10 years. I think this fish is still on here. Hand line. Nope. I think sharked it on the top again. It's going to be a short day for us. It's out the butt section too. That's wild. In the ferrule. In the ferrule? In the ferrule. Dang. God dang it. That was not a hard set. Was just... Crack. I'm thinking we can put it back together. <laughs> oh, almost. I that was not a hard set. I don't know if I've ever seen one. <laughs> that was a less hard set. <laughs> Lunch time. Lunch time. <laughs> Who needs a reel? Well, I have broke two rods today. <laughs> like I said, that's two more than I've broken. God, I don't remember the last timer. There we go. I'm just trying to get this out of here so I can. Like What's you. the chances we get a 30 incher right now? I'd like to see you catch one just like this. It would be fine. <laughs> well, wind's starting to pick up. We did some, uh, we had some fun stuff in here. We fished these weed beds and did some stripping, some jigging, did a bunch of stuff, got some really nice fish. Just had a nice lunch. Brock's a great cook, kind of. And, you know, we, we went through some techniques, kind of more lakeish, kind of and a little bit up here on the how we jigged and stuff so it was a good day wind's starting to pick up so we're going to cut across the lake before we get swamped over here i know it's hard to believe that the wind blows in south america but it does and we're going to head out over there i hope you liked it it was really fun it's a beautiful spot hope you liked it and i hope it helps you out